Yeah, going to talk to the farming minister in a sec about government plans to um, ease the transition away from EU rules. But what do farmers actually want? Here's Lynette Steele, who's a farmer at Rotherwick near Hook. Morning, Lynette. Morning. Good morning. What do you want the government to do to make life easier for you? Um, I don't know if it's going to make life any easier, but we really just need a really strong and robust agricultural policy, which is um, full of plenty of detail that farmers can use to help plan their businesses in the short, medium and long term. And, and six years since the Brexit vote, that's something that we're, we're still lacking. So give me an example of the sort of thing that you're yeah, I'm clueless about in the dark about because of a, a lack of strategy. So we've been um, told for the last six years or so that um, we'll be paid um, now to move to um, delivering environmental goods, which is something every British farmer can get behind. So that's habitat creation, um, looking after our waterways, um, planting more um, trees, for example. Um, but we just haven't had the, the clarity and the detail from DEFRA about how that's actually going to work on our farms, on the ground, in a practical setting. And it's it's just something that's really frustrating for us, you know, as an industry, that we've been having a lot of warm words from DEFRA, but just that lack of clarity, it has made our business planning nigh on impossible. So I'm really hoping that the minister will be able to come forward with some more detail that will give the industry the confidence to, to invest in our own future and to continue to produce high quality food for the public because that the, the planning thing is so hard when you're running a farm anyway are you since there's so many um, uncontrollable factors weather being the obvious one but other things as well um that when you don't even really know where the government's coming from it makes it near impossible i think it absolutely has been um a really difficult task over the last six years and um if only i had a crystal ball life would have been a lot easier um so, you know, those external factors, especially as with everybody in the last few years, the, the pandemic, the, the war in Ukraine, um, cost of living crisis, inputs going up. It's, it's a really tricky time. Um, and we just need to have a government that feels like it's supporting us rather than just holding us back. Right. And what, what would you say is the biggest challenge you've got right now you've listed a few of the um, things going on in the world that are, that are affecting all of us there what's the biggest challenge you've got at the moment i think it's our production costs at the moment um you know our input costs of feed and fertilizer fuel and uh, the same as it's facing every business in the country um you know we we're trying to deal with that um while also trying to um, sell our products into a marketplace that will pay for this great British produce that we produce um, in the middle of a cost of living crisis. You know, our businesses are really no different to anybody else's. Um, it's, it's just a really tricky time, isn't it? Lynette, thank you. Lynette's a farmer in Hook and the farming minister, Mark Spencer, is live on the Peach Show. Morning, Mark. Good morning. So Lynette says that it'd be great if the government had any kind of plan because at the moment you're just holding farmers back. Well, so uh, that's what today's about. This is our plan. We're launching the plan. Uh, I hope that uh, she'll have the opportunity later today to have a look at the schemes that we're launching. We want to work with her. We want her to be successful. We want her to continue to produce great British food, but also to benefit the environment and biodiversity at the same time. Since Brexit, um, Lynette and other farmers say the government's talked about paying farmers to do things that are good for the environment, to create habitats, to plant trees, all that kind of thing. But it's always been words with no detail. Are we going to get that detail yeah. today? So that's exactly what the detail we are getting today. That's what we're launching. These are the new schemes, which... Uh, uh, so there are three sort of new schemes that we're launching with all of the payment rates so that she can form a plan over the next few months as we go into the next season she can form her plan and look at the schemes that are available uh, and decide how she wants to interact with these uh, new payments and that that bring huge benefits to the environment and to the to her farm and hopefully to her profitability i think a lot of people are saying why has it taken so long the brexit vote was in 2016 
Yeah, so I think it's been really important to get this right. We've been doing a, lum a number of pilots working with a few selected farmers uh, up and down the country in, in different areas. We've listened to that feedback and some of it has been positive, some of it has been critical. We've listened to that, which is the result of that uh, feedback is the schemes we see today. So, you know, we're, we're going to pay farmers to do um, to, to manage their land in a slightly different way. So, to give you some practical examples, instead of cutting your hedge in August, September, if you can leave those hedgerows to February, March, um, that, that brings huge benefit in terms of the berries that are on that hedgerow, creates a massive pantry for wild birds to go and feed on. And if, if next to that hedgerow you put a small wildlife strip of, of flowers, say six metres wide, that actually becomes a breeding ground for things like ladybirds and lacewings, which eat the aphids, which cause the diseases in the crops the farmers are trying to grow. Obviously, farmers will be all ears to your plans today, but you're announcing all this in a, a political context of everyone else talking about Dominic Raab with 24 civil servants having made formal complaints about his behaviour, Nadim Zahawi, who, whatever we don't know, we do know how to pay a, a penalty to HMRC while he was Chancellor of the Exchequer in charge of HMRC. You think these people should be continuing in their jobs while the various investigations into their behaviour go on? Well, I, I think, I mean, clearly the Prime Minister has been very clear about this. He's asked for those investigations to uh, take place. I think that's, that's natural justice, isn't it? That you have to give people the opportunity to have their case put to them and to be able to defend their, themselves and to establish the facts before you make a, a decision. That seems like natural justice to me and we have to await uh, the, the results of that investigation. Also looks a bit like kicking it into the long grass, hoping we all get bored of it so that by the time these investigations report we're all talking about something else. I, I, I don't think you'll forget about it, will you? I think you'll, you'll await the results of that investigation. That seems like a fair thing uh, to do to me, to establish the facts before you make a decision. Do you accept that it looks bad? No, so I, I, you know, clearly uh, I think we've got to wait for that process to, to take place. Obviously, what I'm focused on is my job and trying to deliver great environmental outcomes. But uh, I understand that. I, th I think pretty much everyone listening would accept it looks bad, but you, you're reluctant to say that. Well, you know, I, I think uh, if you start to navel gaze as a, as a government, you, you're not focused on the constituency you're meant to be representing. And what I'm trying to do is focus on uh, my job as a government minister, deliver for my constituents and people up and down the, the country. I think that's the right thing to do as a government minister. Mark, thank you. Mark Spencer is the farming minister. We'll have a look at those uh, detailed plans being announced today and bring more to you tomorrow morning. Ten.